Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Half a Nice Day Podcast with your host, Janine. And Joshua. Today, we have a very special guest, as we always do. Always, we always have very always. special guests. Yes. He is a Guinness World Record holder recently, just in March, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. He's a TEDx speaker. He is Dubai's very first person of determination, personal trainer, yeah. and also he's a rapper. Mm. So we might have to ask him to spit some tracks later and beats. His name is Sujit Vargis. Sujit Koshi Vargis. What's up, what's up, people? So, like they said, every guest of yours is special. That just means I'm a little extra. Yes. Just, just You're the yes. most extra right. special guest that we have. Thank <laughs> yes, you so much yes. for your time. Thank you, guys, so it's much for having here. me. So, so uh, before we begin the podcast, I just want to say how we found out about him. Yeah. Like, you were not on my radar in the beginning right. until I went for... Uh, so, I've been on the lookout for a good barber, a good... Uh, <laughs> like, someone who can really do my hair. Because I've been trying out different places now, and I've been struggling to find, like, a, a really good barber at mm -hmm. a good price and a good distance from, from where I live. And I went to this place called Chop Shop. Shout out to those guys. Um, booked an appointment, went there, and while I was like getting my shave, and like there's this towel on my head, I could see I, I heard someone like an influencer like speaking like, "Hey guys, I'm here at Chop Shop getting my haircut done. Look at the beard, amazing fade. Shout out to my barber over here." I'm like, "Oh, there's another influ like not another. I'm not an influencer, but <laughs> there's another. There's an influencer right beside me, but I really couldn't see, and." Um, uh, so then I think he left a few minutes after I was starting um, and then and then uh, I went to the Instagram page and then I right. just that's where I saw your story I'm like oh wow this guy's has a really inspiring story yeah and like this is coincidence maybe yeah. because you know like for me I, like, I always used to go to like a neighborhood barber tender hum shave mm -hmm. yeah no I was I used to do the same thing <laughs> yeah. I used to do the same everything but then the quality that I got here and that was an invite and I remember I finishing because I was there like for an hour and a half, man. Like, yeah, I could know? hear, I could hear and, that. And uh, yeah. I think when you came in is when I left or something yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's how you texted me, and that was my longest shave and my haircut. <laughs> an hour and ever. a half. <laughs> an hour and a half, guys. I'm like, dude, I don't have time for this. I'd rather look like an animal than spend an hour and a half, right? So, but yeah, that, I mean, at least I'm glad we connected that way. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it is like. It's and he maybe, messaged me right after that. He he sent me your profile and he's like, okay. No, I sent you that to. story. I'm like, that's me sitting, like lying down. I don't know if you still have the story or if you still have the video, I should but, be an archive. Yes. But it should be there, like just me just lying down. and like. He's like, that's me beside. lying down. We need to interview him on the podcast. And I'm like, okay, yeah. let's reach yeah. out. So here you are. Yeah, we are. Yes. Thank you so much. To, uh, to yeah. grooming. That's how we met. Grooming. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Man, take notes. Can, can we start with how inspiring your story is with everything that you've done, but perhaps one of the, I would say, biggest accomplishments that you've had recently yeah. in March was yeah. this. Is yeah. this. For yeah. those who are watching on YouTube, you guys are going to see the Guinness World Record. This is the first that we've had the actual Guinness World Record. Yeah, yeah I want to keep it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not give it back. Yeah, <laughs> Can you just tell us how this came to life? Like, what's the story behind this? And that our you know listeners know so guinness world special. in particular it's like um you know i have been doing uh, a lot of events from a long time mm -hmm. like since i think when i came back to dubai in 2015 is when i got into fitness fitness led me you know having many doors open up for me right and uh i've been always thinking every year because there are certain things that happened in 2017 that really boosted my in terms of where i was getting appreciated you know till then i was doing my work you know for my life for like I need to bounce back because all of you can obviously see I'm in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that has the has its pros and cons of its own, you know. Of course. Pros as in, there's no pro technically, but mm -hmm. the pro is the fire that it gives you to push further. If you see it as such. Right. And, uh, the, the, you know, and obviously the cons are quite obvious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was always trying to push myself. And in 2017, I started winning an award. And then 18 something happened. And then 19, I was like, you know, I was trying to take up more challenges by the time which, which we will talk about later like for example 18 i pulled a car that weighed 1200 kilos Whoa. so you know wow pulling that itself was like a huge task but i did that for a for a point to prove a point to the people and more than proving a point to show people you know that impossible is not really impossible impossible mm. is possible mm. because how common do you hear somebody in a wheelchair pulling a car right, right? and but what if you saw the impossible in something you would have never thought about happen in front of you right, in front right, of your right, eyes right. so that was the idea of that and I do a lot of visual thinking manifestation, like, you know, a lot of that. And uh, so this is something I was like, you know, just thinking, man, how great can it be? Like, you know, because from where I started, getting a Masala Award was great. Becoming a TEDx speaker was great, like you said. 
uh, pulling a car was great you know getting becoming an official ambassador for dubai fitness was so as you think you're like how big can life be right mm. so what's the biggest you're like what's next what's the yeah. biggest right what can be the actual biggest in terms of um i don't know like a like a trophy like an award an achievement and i was like dude guinness world record would be wow mm. right and the only thing i compare guinness world record to is it's no comparison but still like an olympic gold medal mm. you know what i'm saying like that's yeah, the yeah, level yeah. i i think it is in mm. and um i used to do this a lot of uh, you know speaking to my friends and be like hey you know what how nice would it be if i get a guinness world record like guinness world record is something probably i want mm. but the way i say it It's like I'm sending it out there like I want it you know give to the universe like yeah, in, yeah. in such a way and uh, years just go by and in 2021 I get a DM in my uh, Instagram from the senior PR manager of Guinness World Records saying that hey I'm following your page I love your content just wanted to check are you interested in making a Guinness World Record at first I thought it's a scam Right. I right, mean, you're like you've been pushing it out there yeah, for like, for a while I mean, and then gets, suddenly you get Who gets a DM. a DM like that? You know what I mean, right? It's like so one of I'm, those DMs. Yeah, right? I said, you know, it's like those DMs like make a million bucks if you just yeah, click out this link. Yeah. I'll teach you forex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll teach you forex <laughs> and you know, get verified and all all of that jazz. So I thought it was the same thing, but then we got talking, but then when things came into email is when I knew things were legit. Right, right. You know, when things moved to emails and I started seeing logos, I started seeing authentication right is when i understood yeah okay you know actually this is the real deal and i was like whoa and from 2021 we were talking we had uh, 2022 is when we actually got into the matter on what's possible what's not and they gave me 10 options seven of them weren't possible physically for me okay because of physical limitation like you need more core balance to do those certain events so it was not possible and the la- the last three was i think remember one of them was uh, pulling a car Mm-hmm. that weighed 1700 kilos okay and i'm like wait i have done 1250 and i used to practice with 2500 so i'm like this is possible but like you've done it i've done it you know and uh, and that had a time frame though like that had uh-huh. within a minute or something right. like that but pull like for what's the distance so i pulled the car for like what at least a good 8 meters mm-hmm. oh wow okay. right uh, so that itself was also back and for something around that or maybe more i'm really not sure mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. numbers and uh, then i thought then they can brainstorming back like let's figure something out then they took a week let's brainstorm with the team and they come back why don't we do the largest gps drawing i'm like what is that like i don't know what is a gps drawing mm-hmm. and then they said you will have to wheel in a certain direction or whatever direction you choose cuz you have to do the work you have to do the design you have to do the selection of the roads and when you finish that it should look like a logo mm-hmm. now the question okay. is what logo right Now I wanted to do the logo of you know in uh, the three finger salute. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I wanted okay. to do the three finger salute or I was thinking of even writing my name mm-hmm. in a certain way. I mean why not like uh, mm-hmm. Guinness World Record is my name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we got talking and then I got thinking I'm like man it's got to be more impactful. And even even the guy Hassan was like dude we got to do something that's impactful, right? I'm like fair enough that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then he's like why not the logo of a wheelchair? Mm. I was like damn. Mm. Like Dude, like I was like it's like this all this bulbs in my head just clicks like right. what a more powerful statement if right, I exactly. if I yeah, do yeah, this yeah. Mm. for the whole world for every other person in a in a wheelchair. Mm. You know because people need that my friend people need that hope they need that fire they need that push because there are so many places where I've seen people are not getting it. Right. You know people it's like people are uh, they shunned mm. they kept aside they don't have that fire the shadow and people so. yeah 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 so it's so bad you know that's mm. another topic altogether. So I'm like man if I do this this is like such a powerful statement right and um, then they gave me because I had to do the designing so I spent I think more than a week and a half or something uh going finding the roots earth. no finding how to draw a gps tracker how right. to draw because how do I draw a line on a map right. you know what I mean right yeah. I mean I only follow google maps till date <laughs> so uh, I got on google earth I started I so I got on google I started understanding how do you actually do it and they showed me the way i went to google earth and uh, different other sites and then i started learning how to draw a map you know okay. basically you can do the walking or the cycling or the running or the cars and they'll show you the routes accordingly of the bike as mm-hmm. such right. now the challenge is <clears throat> if i have to draw a shape of a wheelchair the road has to support it exactly you know i cannot just do it on a barren land if i do it on a barren land it's going to be a very small design because how big of a ground you just know that's kept like that yeah, right? yeah. and even though i do it on a ground the ground is either going to have sand rubble or uh, grass yes wheeling on these three yeah, uh, uh, is not the most easiest thing so it has to be a road so i looked at first jvc because jvc has this big circle 
Right. So in my head, when yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. wheelchair, I was thinking first a circle, and I can build on that. Yeah. So JVC wasn't was a flop because the roads wouldn't support other than just the end of the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Then I looked at palm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, palm is going to be one big challenge because it's a huge circumference. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then again, palm is just that outer tip. Exactly. There's yeah. like, no way you can make yeah. a chair out of it. And then I was just checking, checking. I'm like, wait, was it a round thing? And I'm like, wait, that's Butch Khalifa downtown road. And bro, believe me, I started designing it and it just fell right in place perfect. Wow. Like you saw the design. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, yes, Burj Khalifa yes. happened. I'm like, this has got to be a blessing from God. Yes. Because it's the most iconic building in the entire world. Yeah. Right? And the wheelchair just fits perfectly there. And, and, and I, it's I, said road. It, I said it to them, they approved it. Nice. Okay. So Guinness World approved yeah, yeah, it because yeah. they sent it to the main head office. They're like, yes, this can be a record. This is the record if you can pull it off. Mm-hmm. I'm like that's how things uh then things uh, started. You know, that's how things got into confirmation. You know, one after the other. Okay. Right. So they let you design it. You got the designer ready, but then I saw the video as well. There's like how many cars yeah, were following oh, yeah, so you? Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, having said all these things, this, so the were the roads closed or everything was shut down, my friend. Wow. Okay, okay. And guy, it was at night. Let me just say this yeah. again. This guy shut down downtown. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> this guy said, no, we are a rapper. He's really like, a rapper. I am not even kidding. Like, you know, I'm just so happy. I got to shut down downtown. N- not not like, a lot of people that's can not, say no that. One, not a lot yes. of people can say that. Yes. That sh- downtown and financial center. Wow. Shut down completely. Traffic being built up. It's like the most. Until like, I pass. It's, it's the most badass moment I've had in my life. It's I one of the busiest roads. For, for, for those who don't know, downtown is basically like where Dubai Mall is, Bush where Burj Khalifa, Khalifa is. is. So you can imagine how many people and traffic and cars go in and out of that particular uh, route. Yeah. Right. And he shut it down, basically. And got a tennis <laughs> record off What's of that. Up? Yeah. yeah. So I saw the video. Yeah. You had uh, a couple of escorts behind right. you. Right. Like not a couple, a lot. A lot. People. So this yeah. is something. Uh, so we had to coordinate with Dubai Police, Imar Command Center, because Imar Command Center are the guys. So there's a big office uh, next to opposite side of Burj Khalifa, if you know, yeah. if you go a little inside. So these are the guys who control downtown. Mm-hmm. Right. Anything right, right. that moves in and out of downtown, these guys know about it more than the police. Like, so okay, they okay. literally run the scene. And, uh, and Dubai Mall management because I was traveling through Dubai Mall. Okay. Right. Now, spoke to them. They loved the idea and they said, let's do it the coming week. You know, so it was boom, boom, boom. It was quite fast. Like, it's I just, not even like, okay, let's plan ahead. Of no, one. no, nothing. So, you know what? It's uh, We got to talk about some other things because the amount of complications that went with approvals. And I had to be running for a lot of them. So, mm. there was a tentative date that was planned and that got cancelled because a certain approval did not come and okay. people were asking for it. Yeah. Like Dubai Mall, there are like so many different sections of people and it's not like I have to take one approval in Dubai Mall. I have to take one approval from this section, from this section, from... Uh-huh. I'm like, why don't you guys just coordinate, right? Like, I'm not mm. dissing them but I'm like, mm. it, it would have been my... would have been easier. Yeah. But because of a certain approval didn't come on that... on Friday... It didn't happen mm. and everything had to get postponed. And the next time, and I was sick. Like mm. I was, uh, if you're talking about the training I had for this event, I had two days of training in that, in that entire month. Oh, So I'm not, I train a lot. I'm a, tra- I'm, a, I'm a freak when I train, I'm crazy. But during the, so my body is built as such, but during this one month of, uh, one and a half month of the world record, I got two days of training. Just because two Because you were days. sick. Because I was sick, I was oh, on, wow. I was sick. I was running around a lot. I was working. I was doing my nine to five. Right. I was meeting with the teams of Dubai Police. I was mm-hmm. coordinating with people. The amount of pressure that was on me, I think, during this period, is the reason why I have so much white hairs on my left and right side. And I'm not even joking <laughs> about this. Like that's the amount of pressure and tension I went through. Yeah. To pull this off. And you really wanted to push it through. I really wanted to push yeah. it through. And I was so sick. And let's say this happens. So this is the 5th of March. And 5th of March was the first date. On 3rd of March, we came to know it's not possible. Because DFTC's approval was not there. Okay. Now, DFTC is Dubai TV and Film Commission. Anything you want to do a big production shoot. Uh, because we have drones and we have like. Ah uh, yes. Huge You production. need proper. And we needed their approval. And I'm like dude. And they're telling me this on Friday. And Dubai, and, uh, Dubai Mall is asking me for the approval. I'm like. And I'm like, Guinness World, where's your approval? And Guinness World, like, dude, do you remember? We will only facilitate the program. You have to be running with all Yikes. of this. Okay. And I'm like, on Friday afternoon, I'm like, damn. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I nearly thought we're going to do this on Sunday. And um, I contacted DFTC head on Monday. Someone connected me with people I knew and everything. And he was like, dude, it's a commercial shoot. It's not a commercial shoot. You're doing it a personal reason. You don't need an approval. 
I'm like, are you serious? Like, yeah. And then on Tuesday or Wednesday, they gave me the NOC. Like from right. the official channel, they gave me like, you know, no approval needed for this. You can go ahead and do this. So I didn't tell anybody that because I wanted, because everyone is waiting for this approval. Yeah. Now, I am sick and I was on antibiotics and I have a wound I was recovering from. Oh, wow. And the doctor asked me to, you know, we might have to do a procedure. I said no. Uh, and this week, so I thought, let this week pass by. I'll at least get a good three, four days of training, a little bit more endurance and I'll go. On Thursday, they are like, Sajid, where's your approval? Everyone, like the Bible is asking and uh, people I know. I mean, in the in the Guinness world, I'm like, fine. You know what? The, the rushing, I'm like, I got the approval. And I propose that we do it on the following week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, like the week after. So I have this week. Yeah, so you had some time to rest. I get a recuperate. call. Yeah, I get I get a call on, I think, Thursday evening or Friday morning. Sujit, Sujit from Guinness World. And they're like, listen, everyone is super excited about it. Everyone is on. We are glad and there's no more approvals required. And uh, let's do one thing we're doing it this weekend. I'm like, no, no, no. I mentioned in the email. Let's do it after one more week. No, no, no. Everyone is excited. The Bible list is very excited. Everyone's excited. Let's go do it. I'm like, oh. I'm not excited. Can we I, how, what do I say, right? I'm like, I got to do this, right? Yeah. And I don't want one more reason for them to like be like, this does, this shouldn't, like this. This is Because of happening. complications and yeah. I'm gone, because this is my shot. It's not yeah. everybody else's shot, yeah. right? And, and uh, you've sort of put it out for so long. You've been working on this, I, not just the time of working with them, yeah. but it's like years and it's years. It's a lot and, of, yeah. it, it, and it's it's like, you know, you get shots like this one time in your life. Yeah. I mean, I think about, I think yeah. it's not a bit, it's not an everyday other shot, yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, and uh, on Friday evening, I'm sitting and I'm like, the approvals, I'm still not confirmed if they will push it or they will make it happen on Sunday, mm -hmm. which is the 19th, right? Uh, 12th, shit. <laughs> 12th, 12th, yeah. So I proposed yeah. it for 19th, which was the next Sunday. And on Friday, I'm sitting and someone asked me like, dude, and I'm still recovering. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm gosh. not that 100% in my zone. And they're like, dude, do you think you can pull it off? Like, you know, it's not going to be easy. You just have, I'm like, I'm, I'm still not sure it might happen. I only got the confirmation of 100%, boom, we're doing it, was on Saturday afternoon. So it's okay. literally so like hours away. 24 hours before, yeah. like something like that. Yeah. And uh, I told this guy on Friday night, I was sitting and we were chilling and he was like, you think you can pull it off? Like it's 8.71 kilometers, man. You don't have, you have not trained for such. And I've never wheeled in my life that, that far. Okay. Mm. Okay. It's like the first time I didn't, I didn't train uh, wheeling, wheeling or something, you know, uh, but I told him if there's somebody in Dubai who can do it, it's only me. Mm. And that's 100%, you know, like yeah. there's no Problem, one yes. who's yeah. as mad as me to pull this off. Right? Someone pulling it, it's, it's going to be me. And on Saturday I hear it, I'm like, you know what, screw it, let's go do it. And Saturday I run, I take my wheelchair, I have to make sure it's oiled up, you know, tires are right. full. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. running with all those things, you know. I come back home at 11 o'clock, I know 10 o'clock, I, I remember my sister came over to stay with me that day, just in case I don't sleep. Right. Um, I mean, last thing yeah. you want to do, be sleeping when uh, Guinness World Record is happening, right? And uh, yeah, you so should have slept though. <laughs> imagine, where are you fine? No, I'm just sleeping, yeah. I'm waking up, just, just hold the convoys there, I'll be there. Yeah, no, I'm coming, I'm uh, coming. And uh, I, um, yeah, so I came, I, I ate my I ate my food, everything at 11 o'clock in the night. And I, oh, so slept. this was late at night. This is, I'm talking about 11th, okay, March, right? okay, at 11 o'clock. Then I think I slept at 12 o'clock, I woke up at four o'clock, and at five o'clock, we are under Burj Khalifa fountain. Oh, so it was uh, early sport. early morning. It's okay. super early morning. Wow. Yeah, yeah, because okay. we had to shut down the places. You don't yeah. want inconvenience during the peak hours. Right. And uh, it's a Sunday. So that's the reason we chose uh, to do it on a Sunday mm -hmm. because less crowd. So you're and running on four hours of sleep. Four hours of sleep. You just got out of uh, antibiotics yeah. or still in this dazed phase. Uh -huh. And you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. World record. Yeah. Okay. And at uh, five How was that? Five <laughs> o'clock I land. In Burj Khalifa, yeah. and that was a meeting point, and I'm expecting five cars. I'm expecting maybe three cop cars because we I knew there were going to be cars in front of me and back of me mm -hmm. to block the roads. Right. But that's what I'm thinking. So when we come, people see this that they're going to stop, right? No. I land at five o'clock and I told my I drove the car. I told my sister I want to drive to the place. I drove the car at five and we reached at five ten. And I see there's like under the fountain from all the way, there's cars, 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 cars. Like all with the blue lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And just one ambulance and one, uh, and I told her, I think there's something else happening here. It's not just my event, okay, you know, okay, like, okay. there's just too many like cars. Like a shake might there's be. Too, yeah, like a shake yeah. might be coming or something. Yeah. I thought Faza is probably going to appear or something. <laughs> and then five seconds, I, five, ten minutes, I get a call on my phone, they're like, from Khalid, Major Khalid. He's like, Sujit, yes, where are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm under the fountain. Where are you guys exactly? Oh, yes, we are also here. 
<laughs> I'm like, whoa, this is for this me, is son. Money. You know, like, like that's when I'm like, man, I can't okay. fail now. Like, <laughs> now I, you know, I can't back out. And, and then they take my wheelchair and they they fit the GoPro and everything over there. Okay. Then I get on the chair, and I'm in a very different zone now. Mm. You know, I'm not in a zone to meet. Hey, hi, I'm the no. I'm in a very sharp zone. I'm just trying to determination. You know, yeah, feel Focus, it. Yeah. I, I I bought my headphones just for that. I was just gonna ask, did you put in some? Music? Yeah, no, I put yeah. in the music before the the, and there are certain tracks I listen to. Yeah. So before I went for the record, I planned certain tracks I'm gonna listen to before the I do the event, and when I come back home, I'm gonna listen to one track, and that's gonna be my winning track. Nice. Okay. Okay. That nice. was that track was. Yeah. That. And I'm listening to like Eminem, Still I Collapse. Nice. I'm mm, okay. li- listening to Trick Trick, uh, you know Trick Trick with Eminem. Hype you up. Yeah, yeah. I'm like super yeah. charged up. So and I'm listening to. Uh, Uh, this one, uh, Justin Bieber. What? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, don't judge me, guys. This is a billion the zone. <laughs> were you allowed to listen to music while you were doing the whole? Thing? I was, but okay. I didn't. I didn't think about it. Okay. You know, I didn't. Uh, yeah, you just wanted to, to be that. in the zone. Yeah, I'm just in the zone. Yeah. And um, they were like, "Oh, everyone's ready. Everyone's ready. Okay, everyone's good. It's all a green sign." I take my starting point, and then on the Burj Khalifa, on that road, like towards the fountain, there's like all the convoys laid back one by one. Like three, four cop cars, sorry, three, four cop cars. Then some other cars. Then the ambulance, and then the studio guys. Okay. Okay. So that's how it to is. To do all the filming. Yeah. Yeah. No, filming is happening with me. Like they are in front, but this is like the main truck. If they want to change cameras and all the all right. this stuff, okay. right? Okay. Okay. And then boom, I start, and I start, and uh, the first eight hundred meters or something was the easiest. Like I'm in good energy. Like I just had coffee, and I'm like pumped This up. This is easy. <laughs> I'm like wheeling, and so there's a cop who's running with me. Okay. okay. So just in case if I fall down, I need water or something. So there's someone to take care of me. And in front of me, there's a small buggy with a cameraman mm-hmm. who's filming the entire thing. And right in the back, there's Major Khalid. There's another cop, and there's the adjudicator. Okay. Adjudicator. So she's going to judge everything, right? And boom, I take off at the first uh, 800 meters in good power. It's like a sprint. You go full power, right? But what happens after the sprint? Yeah. You're panting, right? Because everything right. in your body hurts. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened. So the first eight hundred meters, the guy Seth, his name is Seth from yeah. the Webulus. He's running in full power with me. Like if yeah. you see the mm-hmm. video, he's not even jogging. He's like, every people are like, dude, this stuff is gonna finish sooner than we expect. Can break another record with you, you know, like two you know, break the record at the same time. <laughs> oh, see, <laughs> no, just say it, Seth. Yeah, yeah, like you know. And somebody commented, wait, didn't everybody in that record get the record because everybody created yeah, the wheelchair together? Exactly. Uh, so we and after the eight hundred meters, like the first. I think we passed the buy mall. We went a little straight towards financial center. That's when I feel, dude, it's it's hurting, you know. Mm. Like it it gets to you, you know. And and w- were you at the halfway point? Not yet. No, this eight hundred meters. And so eight point seven one kilometers. Yes. I oh, only oh, okay. did eight hundred meters. Less than one eighth. Of less it. than one kilometer, yeah. right? Yikes! And that's what way really less than one kilometer, man. I think it's five hundred meters, if I'm not wrong. Maybe six hundred. And uh, when I did it, and when it started hurting, and that's when it just hits you. Shit. Yeah, you're like this okay. Is, yeah, and I look at it's down. It's it's dark. I can see the cars. I can see all the colors of lights on the back, mm. and and it's really hurt. And then I start wheeling instead of two hands, one hand because okay. it's hurting. I saw I saw yeah, that I in one video. Yeah. The entire after that was with one hand. Okay, like, you know because you know after you do this to just do this. Yes. You can't like yes. it's just so hard. You know, like taking both of your hands. So both you, your energy. It's it's not easy at okay. all. Okay. So you're alternating now. I'm alternating it okay. because that's the best I can do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And after the first, and then I reached, and then we're taking the first ride. And the first ride, I think another after hundred meters, I stopped. When I stopped, because till then I was still managing. You know, I was still okay, okay. going some out. Complete stop. Uh, then I complete stopped. <laughs> And then I was holding my arm, you know, because it's really hurting Burning me at this and moment. Yeah. And then Seth is like, "You need water," and I took some water. Someone gave me some a little food mm-hmm. uh, to eat, like just a snack. Yeah. And uh, and then everybody gets out of the car. Like who's the ones behind me? They get out of the car and they're like, "What happened? What happened? What happened?" Like some men, some Arab women. Like, "What happened? What? Are you okay? Is something happened?" And the way they panicked because the way they saw me starting, boom! I was like yeah, yeah. Sonic. You know what I mean? Right. And like, why did he stop right now? Is, mm-hmm. is everything okay? It was such a change. Like, yeah, just such a change. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, no, it's just hurting. You know, I just need rest five minutes. And then the ambulance guys come next to me to check my BP. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? Get back in. <laughs> so that like pissed me off. Yeah. Like ambulance guys getting coming like from the back next to me, pissed the hell out of me <laughs> off. 
I'm like, what happened? The guy literally came out. He opened the door. He opened the back to take. I'm like, wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, no, just going to check. I'm like, no, 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 get back in. I've done worse than this. This is nothing. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, pissed yeah. me off. I'm like, I'm ready. And boom, I just took off. Before <laughs> these people got back in the car, I took off. Because you are an athlete. You know, you don't, you're not a... You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> who are you talking to my friend, you know? It pumped you up it even more. It pumped me up. Yeah. It pissed me off. Yeah. And then I wheeled. But then, you know, after that, I just told myself, like, you know, when I was wheeling, I'm like, dude, it's the world record. Like, it's mm. the real deal. Right. There's eight convoys behind you. Mm-hmm. There's there's a car in front of you. There's drones on top of you. Dubai downtown is shut down for you, Sujit. It's a Guinness world record. It's going to happen the only one time in your life. You better deliver. You want to die, die here, but you better do this shit. You know like yeah. what I mean? You better and deliver. And that was the attitude. And after that, even though it was one hand, two hands, I gave it every damn thing. Wow. I can proudly say for the first time in my life, that is something I gave my 100 and freaking 10%. Yeah. Wow. I, can because I, I can imagine. Yeah. Doing that, you know, then financial. Now, this is a challenge. Okay. Some of the roads are not straight. Mm-hmm. like entering Zabil Palace so right after I took this turn like the, this incident what I spoke about I came in front of Zabil Palace Zabil Palace Road is inclined so oh. when, you're, when you're dead tired and you're trying to do this incline it is so hard because you're moving only this much yeah yeah, yeah. You know? you're giving effort so is much more the effort and, is way yeah. more and then there are roads that are a little bit more slanted so you okay, just have okay. to give a slight push you are in a way more comfortable zone and you're going in good speed so I did Zabil Palace and so this is the best part about Dubai Police and big shout out to these guys because every place I went, including Zabil Palace, there's traffic, there's some cars already waiting and there's a cop car blocked. Okay. Uh. Then I came to Financial Center, all four sides, there's like AMG, there's Pajeros, there's a patrol, boom, 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 blocked, blocked for me to pass through. Wow. And there I am in the middle of the road taking selfies because say, taking selfies was a part of the, of the, of the whole record. I need to take a selfie of where I am okay. and talk, talk about my timing. So oh, I did that in some okay. cruise, like in front of Zabil Palace. There's a video I'm taking a selfie. Okay, but you, you stopped about, for that, or it was, I stopped okay, for that, okay, like okay, in the middle okay, of the road. Nice. I could stop wherever I want. Nice. So then I didn't have to stop in financial center. But I'm like, dude, when I saw on all four sides, there are like six, and there's an AMG over there stopping. There's a, <laughs> another Merc. There's a patrol. Fancy there's cars. a picture. I'm like, I'm not gonna miss this opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And there's traffic built up. Yeah. <laughs> so I go in the middle of the road, and I actually stop and I drink some water. I take my phone. So guys, here we are in financial center. Look at the traffic we can build up. And uh, we have completed so and so thing. Because I'm never going to get that again. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then I wheel. Now I'm wheeling back towards Dubai Mall. So I created the hand of the wheelchair. Now I created the head and I'm creating the body. So I'm coming back from financial center to to Dubai Mall. So I was going back to Dubai Mall. And I see when I, you know, that main big crossing is there right in Dubai Mall. Like, uh, right in front of Dubai Mall, that big interchange. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And one cop car in the middle of it, boom, stopping that entire traffic on the right. Pajero stopping the entire traffic on the left. But I didn't stop there because I was in that zone, you know. Like, till then, that entire stretch is quite far, like, from financial center to Dubai Mall. It's a long stretch. Yeah. If you see that video, it's one hand. And it's not even one hand like I'm resting. It's one hand and I'm falling. So I have, so you should know one thing about us. I'm basically paralyzed below my chest. Okay. Okay. Before we come to all this, I'm basically paralyzed below my chest because my spinal cord is injured at my T5, T6 level. So below That's this, I cannot feel anything. Hmm. Like skin wise or I have no control. Mm-hmm. So initially, before I, like initially in, during the accident phase, I used to even fall if I don't hold on to something. Oh, so I was, okay. yeah, I was very... Because your balance like, was oh, still man, not like, used to it. Yeah. You know, my past, you guys will go nuts. Yeah. You know, so I built it over during over time. So even though when I'm doing this, I'm falling like this. And then I'm doing the other one, I'm falling like that. Then I think I saw one of that clips. Was it, was yeah. it the same wheelchair? The same Guinness World Record wheelchair. Nice. Yeah. Selling it for a million yeah. and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I wheeled and then I saw the most epic part of the whole journey was, like we spoke earlier, I go and, you know, Dubai Mall. So, you know, fashion parking. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. So it goes down, right? So mm-hmm. that's the, I was creating now the legs of the wheelchair while going through fashion parking in the basement. So we're not entering the mall. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're just going down through the basement. Mm-hmm. And I'm going straight, like for a very long straight, and then a right, and then I'm going to get out of the mall. Right. That would create like the leg, like then including the knee. That turn would be the knee. Mm-hmm. And th- that was the hardest uh, surface I had to wheel through. Because it's not it's not a road. Mm. It's a rub. It's like, you yeah, know, yeah, brick, yeah, 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 by yeah, brick, yeah, yeah. brick by brick by yes. brick by yes, brick. It, yes, it, yes. it was, that was the road. But it just coming before that, so I reach all the way to Dubai Mall and I see the craziest side of my life. So right before fashion parking, there is a signal. Mm-hmm. 
and there's an insane amount of cars. Wow. Being blocked by four jeeps. Wow. Okay. And I'm like, they're waiting for me, dude. It's not like they allow and like, okay, guys, now stop. He's coming. No. Until I reach the point, you know. I'm like, this is the most epic thing. Dude, you got to do what we have to do. I guys, <laughs> and this is my signal to everyone. Stop. Like, because all of them are behind me. I'm like, stop. And then I take my phone out. I I did like two videos, dude. <laughs> I'm like, number one, just showing the corner. Number two. Like to Maybe. show the traffic being yes. built up, man. Yeah, like, I can imagine everyone in their cars like, look at this guy. Like, I'm late <laughs> yeah, for work. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, there are people who commented, this is the reason I was late for work. That day. <laughs> it's a Sunday, but we know you're lying. <laughs> just wanted to comment on my post. And uh, then and then we passed through. I reached Dubai Mall. That's where I took, I think, my first longest break. Okay. So the first break I took was in the first incident I told yeah. you at yeah. that moment. The second break I took was under the Weimar. Yeah. And these are the only two breaks I took in the entire... It was a long time was a long, you got another I, break. I, after a long time, I took a yeah. break. And this was under the mall. And we took like for a good five to seven minutes. There were like people coming. And, uh, you know, and then the... Did the ambulance, ambulance guy, guy like, come again? No, beat him up. No. <laughs> He's sweet guy. I'll tell you, I'd say, the story's going to get funnier towards the end. Okay, I'm not even joking. I'll tell you why. With the ambulance guy especially. <laughs> and... Uh, after a while, we took a break, drank some water, just calmed down, relaxed, and uh, we started wheeling. So that road to wheel was super hard because, you know, my my legs, I don't have, you know, um, so when, when I'm going through a lot of rubble, mm -hmm. like, it just... It just moves uh, with you. that? What yeah. happens? Yeah. So that, yeah. Uh, that happened a lot. Because then you don't have control over yeah, right. it. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of humps. Okay. Like, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of humps. Because you were in the parking area. Yeah, so yeah. see, we're not entering a parking area. Yeah. We're just through the main road. But the main road has a lot of humps, you know, through yeah. Dubai Mall. Yeah. And then we wheel. So wheeling that was like super hard. Like it's going left, it's going right. But we still man I managed to do it. And uh, when we got out, so now this is a video. I don't know. I think you have seen, you guys have seen it. Mm -hmm. There's a slope I'm coming up through. Have mm -hmm. you seen that video? No, I no this I, I haven't seen. Yeah. In Dubai Mall, it's on, it's on my IG. Okay. okay. It's on okay. my IG. So when getting down to Dubai Mall fashion parking is a slope yeah. down. Now visualize another slope the same way up but a little longer. No, I know how uh, Dubai yeah. Mall that the inside roads when you're inside Dubai Mall it it's usually up and down. I know the bricks are there there. No, 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 bricks are there. So you know the slope in we yeah, entering yeah, the yeah, park. Yeah, yeah. So same way as to exit, it's a big slope up. Yes. Right, and now that's a longer slope than entering the parking, okay. and usually it's shut down. Yeah. Usually that slope there's always a barricade. Right, but I know because I was going and testing and trialing it, so I know the they would open it on that particular mm -hmm. day, and uh, that day, and then they opened it, and then when I see that far, like now I took the turn, yes, and I'm going in, and maybe another, I don't know, maybe another fifty meters or maybe less, and then the slope comes, and it's a little down. First, we're going from the normal place a little down, and then boom, hey, it's an up, and then you're outside the mall. So then, till I go down, I take a breath, and I already know, and this is like after what six and a half kilometers easily wow. right the okay. whole thing mm. i'm breath and i'm like there's two things to this i'm dead tired my arms are not like already in their 30 percent of capacity left mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean you're already in the home i'm stretch. already yeah, yeah and that close, yeah. secondly that slope has to be done in one shot oh because yeah. you'll roll back else i will roll back, back. Okay. Okay. and uh i'm dead tired so i knew that and that and this then safe the guys were like when he saw like if you see the video with the actual audio, like, come on, come on, Sujit, come on, come on. And you know, you pump me up. And I'm like, Whew. I'm ready. And boom, one takeoff. I wheel everything, like both the hands together. Uh -huh. yeah, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And I remember, man, I still remember. The entire convoy stopped back. They're not following me because in case I fall, they don't want me to fall right on them. So everyone is waiting down. You got to see that video. Everyone's waiting down. Until like this, maybe from this... Till where that sofa is, uh -huh. mm -hmm. maybe till that the thing behind that, and I'm wheeling with everything I get. The wheelchair is moving this much, this much, this much, this much, this, much. and it's so evident if you see the video. And then finally, the last push. I come, dude. And when I come up, like I just <sighs> dropped, you know, mm. I just dropped. You gave everything, and uh, everyone's face was like, yeah, damn, like that was that. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Moment, you know, like for everyone, yeah. man. And uh, oof, like that, I the minute I did that, I was like, you know what? I did, I kind of finished the race in my head. You know what I mean? Right. Like that was, that wasn't easy. That's good enough. Like That was like great enough for me. And then I had to take a turn from the, the small mini fountain that they have in front. 
and then you know C N Z Burak. No. Cz yes. and Burak. Cz yeah, and Burak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. don't get yeah. the way around. Yeah. Cz and Burak. I'd go straight where it would be on my left. Take a U turn and come back. Okay. And then downtown stretch. Like right. that is the last. There's no more turns. Nothing. Yeah. So I did Cn Cz and Burak. Came back again. Everything is block, block, block. And uh, then that last. I think that last half a kilometer or more than a. I think it's more than a kilometer or close to that. Man, that was very, very hard. Like because now I'm done. Like. It's not even I'm running on I'm I'm done like it's I think I'm running on reserve at this moment mm-hmm. but you just know you just know it's there this is literally the final last stretch yeah final stretch I'm giving everything I have and I want to finish in it in a very powerful way you know but honestly that time everything screamed of pain like uh and your I, hands are I, your, I, I your can just imagine like that my, my hands were so bad like you know yeah. everything was just hurting that time you can really see like this like you know That's the one we saw. Yeah, like yeah. I'm feeling like this, and then I see, and I'm crying, and I'm like, "Where is Burj Khalifa?" <laughs> Because I know Burj Khalifa is the starting and the ending point. And right. And after a long, wheeling, 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 and that stretch is really long, man. Like, if you're the, in a car, it's quite okay. But when you're oh, when yeah. you're walking, walking or, or even <laughs> running, it's really long. Yeah. And you know what's the funniest part? So during this part, you know that there's a there's a place where the bird, there's a wings where people do a lot of photo shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a marriage photo shoot happening which gets interrupted because everyone's just looking what's what's happening here. <laughs> I'm not people even joking. Have you interrupted? I've interrupted a lot of people. And literally the hus- <laughs> the guy is in a in a in a suit and the girl is in a gown and they come down from the pedestal to see what's happening. And, <laughs> and uh, that's and a story to tell. <laughs> there's there's a bunch of guys who's going for morning jogs. There's a mother with the baby stroller. Everyone is stopped to just take videos. <laughs> Some dogs coming <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, during this part, there was a guys, a lot of cars. Like then they were allowed to pass with one. Uh, yeah. One lane was open okay, okay, for the okay. public. Right. And I get all I'm seeing looking like everyone. And one guy in a Ferrari. <laughs> one guy is a Pajero. <laughs> Everyone's like recording videos and stuff. Okay. Not a like, good band promotion for me. Hashtag yeah. SKV. <laughs> and I see Bush Khalifa, and I give everything I have. And uh, if you see the video. I just fall on the ground and tapping the yes tapping yes. yeah yeah so yes. that was a sign everyone understood that it's uh, it was done it's done yeah. and if you note know, there's a little after the video I don't think that's posted yet but I tapped because they took a right towards the fountain again but I went straight because okay. I know where's my finishing point mm-hmm. they thought I'm going back to the fountain mm-hmm. so then the cameraman everyone runs come and you know he's running with me like just another few more meters and I tapped on the ground I put my hand on my head because I just fell. And my sisters, I want to do a hug her. You know, she was been waiting there for like all this while. Uh-huh. Yeah. I did this. Believe it. Believe me. Believe me. This is what I did. Okay. I'm. T- what I'm trying to do was this. Come here. Yeah. And yeah. hug. You know what I did? Oh, you couldn't even I even I lift your arm. I couldn't do. I just. Fell. Mm. And then she figured what I was trying, and then she came, hugged me. Yeah. And then, it, then after a while, you know, you recover. It's not like I'm dead after that immediately, yeah. but then. They covered. I got some good, uh, you know, some good. Um, I don't know. So got Gatorade and everything. I was a little charged up, and now the next thing was immediately. So everyone gets out of the car. All the convoys and everyone is having the biggest smile on their faces because it's done. Mm-hmm. Then I have to take my laptop, and I have to now take the. I have to stop the watch. Okay. So the entire thing had to be tracked by. These are the rules of Guinness World. Right. That I had a tracker. I had a Garmin watch that was. Ah, yeah, which maps out the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I had to take that. I had to take the route I created and put it in the laptop, and uh, then I have to show her the map on Google Earth. Mm-hmm. So the design I created and I showed it. They had some discussions because there was a small tech glitch that happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's one more extra route that came out which wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But she's like, "It's okay. We have video evidence. There was proof. I was there in the car, so right. we know the route you took. There was no extra route you took." Mm-hmm. And everyone even was tracking in their watches the the distance. So it's not I'm I'm not the only one showing it. Yeah, I went eight right. points. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah. they, you know, it's, yeah, everyone's verified. It's mm-hmm. it's all right. And uh, now this is the funny part. Now we're coming back to a little funny uh, aspect of the whole thing. So right after she was taking ten minutes to discuss. The paramedics come again with uh, with two big bags of something. <laughs> Now they're scared. Like, can we approach like, you? Like, like can, can we? Can we? We want to take your vitals. Uh, can we just take, check your vitals? I'm like, no, it's okay. No need. Okay. <laughs> no, I am serious. I'm fine. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, no need. It's thanks. And they're like, <laughs> why? Why are we here? I woke then? up at five a.m. <laughs> and then he goes to the major and he's like, can you please ask him that we can check his vitals? Uh, okay. Then the major comes to me, Sujit, please let them just check for five let minutes. Let him do his job. Let him just do the job. <laughs> let them just check. I'm like, fine, fine. Then, <laughs> then he comes, he puts it on me. See, I'm, I'm making. I'm really appreciative of the paramedics and everyone. <laughs> 
but just on a lighter note you know yeah. uh, he comes to me and he's like your heartbeat is high i'm like no shit <laughs> <laughs> he like no i just i just did an 8.7 kilometer way like, in <laughs> you know he tells me the most obvious things man i'm like, dehydrated <laughs> what do i say like uh like so yeah that got dot and then she <laughs> then everyone assembled like under the fo- like in front like literally mm-hmm. in front of uh, Burj Khalifa and then she told what were the re- because the requirements the whatever design I draw has to have a minimum of 7 7 kilometers 7.1 okay. kilometers okay 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 because you need a world record it has to be something right you can't right. just be 1 kilometer and make a world record yeah yeah mm-hmm. and um so did the 8.71 it's a new world record so i created a record i didn't break any record right you know so i think I'll, it, it's that's quite some new. nice uh, thing yeah. about the whole thing yeah and ban i mean what do i say after that i mean after that did they award I, you right away they awarded me right away okay so you got this right yeah away. yeah like right away right nice. away because they don't do the thing like we'll come back after 5 days no no right because okay. right then and there if it's matching it's matching if you didn't do it you didn't do it amazing and, yeah I mean, so your was, sister was there everyone my sister my brother in law was there oh, it's nice. just they both were here in the yeah. so yeah so they had this printed already they had it printed oh wow okay yeah, so right. then but it was their choice to give it to me or not, or not. Yeah, right, yeah. You know? right yeah right yeah and uh, yeah and they had to verify that, it verified yeah. see the roots and everything and after that went home and i played my winning track nice what what is the so it's track? that you know it's that it's a france football song yes is it the ale le bleu no yeah i know it's yeah? killer le lombate yes yeah you know that yeah. mbappe song yeah yeah, yeah mbappe yeah, song yeah. that okay, was my okay. winning for some reason i wanted that to be a winning song in that yeah. song Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, that was their victory song, dude. Yeah, that was a victory song. Yeah, I I recently song. heard it a couple of days. I'm like, dude, this got to be my song. Like, yeah. So that was How like, was your arm after? <laughs> and after that 3 days I went into hibernation. I couldn't Yeah, I was just saying like you bed. slept. I, I slept like there's no tomorrow. I slept 3 wow. days. Oh, wow. Couldn't move, couldn't stand, couldn't do anything. 3 days was complete complete uh, rest. And 3 days after that you were fine. After that it's okay. You know, after that you're back. Like, you know, it's yeah. not like uh, but yeah, the 3 days was I was sleeping. I think I was sleeping 18 hours a koala, you know, sleeping 18 to 22 hours a day. <laughs> what if what if you woke up after those 3 days since you created this and someone yeah. already broke it? <laughs> like you'll be like, "Oh no, <laughs> what would I have done?" It's my my door, right? Yeah. Uh, but like at least I have it. So yeah. there's a lot of confusion people have. There's a lot of people in my DM like this is not the largest GPS drawing. There's a bigger GPS drawing. I agree there are bigger GPS drawing, but people don't understand that this is the largest GPS drawing of a logo done a by a person in a wheelchair right a bigger okay. logo has been created by chevrolet which is huge like hundreds and thousands of kilometers where they just have to drive right right they were driving it okay yeah. Yeah. so people they dm they somebody wrote like this should not be uh, i'm great what he did but don't under mm-hmm. uh, undermine other people's accomplishment nobody's undermining other people's accomplishment guys mm-hmm. but uh, people have not created the largest gps logo in a wheelchair right people have done it in a i'm not sure about cycle but they have done it uh, in a car i know that that's a proper guinness okay. world record okay you know okay. as a guinness world record people have done that maybe some other somebody has done it on being like it's always going to be someone like that no though, there right? are a lot of like, haters like so i yeah. got like 800 comments at least uh, a good 5% is all about haters hating on it i, I mean it d- d- doesn't matter so people are like does it get you i'm like no dude are you serious like first of all from the sh- from things i have been through and where i am today yeah. if you know my past yeah Boy, these won't. I face yeah, you. I'm like I'm not even in your league to even be. You should not even talking about me. You know that's my yeah. attitude yeah. to that. Do and you block haters? From what? No, I don't. I don't you care. just leave. Nobody them. directly DMs me mm-hmm. and says stuff. You know, and even if they do, I I just ignore. I don't have to bother. Mm-hmm. But even in this comments, when there is so much of hate, yeah. So the funniest part is there is some hate. There is some people who are you know those comments where they are fighting back. Like, dude, are you? Do you know what he has done? So don't talk shit like when some, you are just sitting yeah. at people like fighting on behalf. Then of the you. guys like no the level of achievements. So it was just fun. One day I was just reading this because when I open there like hundred likes every day like on certain yeah. posts and then I see some of that. Oh, this is the level of achievement. I've gone so low. Like things like this are oh, appreciated. Wow. I'm like boy, wow. boy, <laughs> I break your legs, get in a chair, and do this. <laughs> and then you know, then you talk. So I mean, for me, it's like you know, but like like I said, you know, coming back to to it. Like haters always going to be there no matter what you do. People won't That's like true. the fact that um, people won't like the fact that you have certain things today, mm-hmm. but you have worked. You have worked very very hard for it, yeah. and I have worked really hard for things. In the most, uh, I'm not comparing my situation to anybody's because everybody has a hard situation yeah. in their own. Right. But I've worked very hard in the most adverse yeah. situations. I've been through 18 surgeries in my life. 
I've seen things happen to my body people cannot imagine. I cannot talk in this podcast. Mm. Like that graphic things I've seen. Mm-hmm. I've been through it. I've been through so much of blood transfusions. I've seen I've had needles poke into my veins so much that I crying in pain and they finally had to poke in places I don't have sensation like my legs. I've had places people nurses couldn't find freaking veins anymore. They have had three nurses to pin me down so my body don't move. I've been I've um Oh man, I've woken up during surgeries. No I've way. seen ah dude, I've seen the most no uh, way. these are things that I'm not I can still talk about. There are right. some things I talk about it will be still too graphic for your users. Mm. So I've been through all of that. I've been through loneliness, depression, I've had been singled out. I've been in the most darkest places of my life. I've I've googled how to kill myself in the most easiest way. So mm. believe me, if I'm here breaking world records today with an attitude like this, no. Then a I'm I'm a, I'm a mountain people cannot even think of yeah. uh, uh think of shaking. So Let, let's just to say that would That's you say though. all of that that you've been through really brought you that it drive it definitely made me who i am it made yeah. me so cold and hot yeah. i mean you know what do i tell like you know um man i've been <sighs> there's a treatment i went through in kerala you know after i had i, w- I was in coma mm-hmm. i was in coma for four days and then i woke up and then mm-hmm. i had apparently after i woke up from the coma two big surgeries were done on my body And this coma yeah. happened after the accident. During the during the accident, like okay. the accident pff, knocked me down. I woke up on the fourth. Are you day. comfortable sharing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got into an accident. I got into an accident. Okay. And in a motorcycle in my accident. motorbike accident in India in, in Bangalore. Okay. I was doing my final year of college four days before my final exams. I was twenty wow. years old at that time. Wow. And uh, I just remember the first memory of waking up in a hospital, and uh, my mom asking me, "Can you see me?" My dad asking me, "Do you recognize us?" And I boom, I pass out. So the real story goes like I woke up on the fourth day. So on the fourth days when they see me and I so gain conscious. So you knocked out for four days. I was not. I was on a ventilator. I was on artificial Gosh. support. Okay. So the doctor verdicted that I would go on the fourth yeah. day. But four days when I came back, you know, my vitals started functioning on its own. Hmm. And uh, I came to know a couple of days later that I just went through a twelve-hour surgery, six hours for my head and uh, my back. So what happened is I suffered sixteen to eighteen fractures on my skull, on the right side alone. Um, Yeah, I can see, see the bob. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not a design from the bob or something. <laughs> I know. I just told some <laughs> chicks. <laughs> they were like, "Hey, nice." I'm like, "It's not from the bob." <laughs> not right? a fade. Yeah, it's just like it's a fun. Know, it's a cooler story than like, yeah. yeah, it's a scar. And uh, yeah, so I got like 18, 16 to 18 fractures on my skull. So the doctor said I would be blind because my eyes got depressed. Like, there's no bone here. Like, it pushed the eye down. Um, my three ribs were broken. One pierced my lungs and it made a hole. Uh, my spinal cord was injured at my T5, T6 level. And mm-hmm. with many other complications, I had a GSC. You know, it's a GSC. So for your viewers and you guys as well, so yeah. when you have an immediate uh, injury or something in your, and paramedics come to check you, uh, they check your vitals. You know, they'll check your pupil dilation, they'll check your sensitivity, they'll right, check right, your right. pulse, your heartbeat, and everything. That's called GSC. So okay, a good, normal, healthy running person is 15 out of 15. Mm-hmm. Mine was three out of 15 at the time oh, wow. of accident. Wow. So I would probably just. That like, like the this, lowest, yeah, very yeah. man. Three out of fifteen is like you're you're barely having a pulse. Your heart is barely beating. You're not you you know you're not responding at all. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I had to come back from that. I mean, I came back from that because of God. No one, no one else. Uh, you know, and um, yeah. So that's why I went into coma, and you know, it took a ventilator to support me for those few days before I could uh, function, and then wow. uh, spend a month with absolute confusion in the hospital, thinking what what happened, and. Uh, mm. Another two months in CMC Vellore, just learning how to do the most basic thing, like how you teach a baby how to pick a glass from a chair. That's how I had to learn. Yeah. Holding on to something, picking it up. How to do this? How to move from this chair to a sofa? Because so you were to, saying your core balance, because was very poor. You know, you I, would, I would fall. Nice. I would just fall. Yeah. yeah, not even waist down. Not even higher. Waist down, chest yeah, up. yeah, you know, chest down. Mm. And uh, and and uh, after that, I came back home, and then. I was there a couple of months, and then there was this worker who had worked in a house earlier, and he came and told my mom that, uh, hey, you know what? There is a a, a Nata Vaidin, which is an Ayurvedic doctor, okay, mm-hmm. in India, and he can actually in Kerala, and he would actually be able to fix him up. So we blindly trusted this guy, and um, he's like, it's going to be a little expensive. We're like, dude, doesn't matter. Just Anything get the guy at this point, walking yeah. right? But he put me in the most rigorous routine ever. Like you know, he oh, wow. he I used to eat dosa and sugar as breakfast for three months. I used to eat rice and lady finger gravy uh, for the next three months as lunch and dinner. So what? Where's the new? There's no milk. There's no fruits. There's nothing. Protein yeah. limited. Yeah. So what happens to all it, this body? It becomes in a, you know more adverse state. You know right. what I mean? Because it was That's seeking for the me. nutrients. Yeah. 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 And he used to hit my thigh like this, saying that that would be the reason of his blood circulation would be built up. 
Hmm. But what happens to a body, it was getting injured, but I was not feeling it. Oh, so right. then one yes. day I, I wake up three months later, couldn't bear it. I was shivering to death for like a week. I can't even pop Panadols because it would repel with his medicine. So literally a week, I'm shivering 24 hours a day. Uh, I had like five blankets on me. I was always holding hot cups of boiling water so I don't... To warm you up. Just to warm yeah. me up. Hot cups of boiling mm. water. That's why it's funny. Today when I go to restaurants and I tell them, I want really hot water and they like, so, so it's very hot. And I'll hold it. And I can, he's like, how are you doing this? But because of all of this stuff, you know. Nerves and... Yeah. Yeah, you know. And, uh, and what happened? And then it reached a point where I woke up one day, my sister came to feed me because my dad and my sisters were here, but she just traveled for a visa change. Okay. And she came to give me the rapam one day and the first bite, puked everything off. Mm. Mom said, done, that's enough. Let's take him to the hospital. And my thighs are black at that time, okay? Like the the, the upper thigh. And uh, I go to the hospital. When I get out of the room, I can't see color. Oh, wow. There were my brother. My brothers came and uh, they were all just figures for me. I still remember. Got in the car, went to the hospital. We are in the ward. The doctor is analyzing me, like figuring out, because we just landed in the hospital. We're like, there's a serious condition. Something's mm -hmm. really wrong with him. So a doctor shouts at my mom. Oh, wow. What is wrong with you? What have you done to him? Two more weeks, this guy would have died. Mm. Because there's a nurse who came, believe this story, believe this story. I know it's going to be unbelievable. Mm. Probably people are like, no, that's rubbish. He's just mm. hallucinating. There's a nurse that came to my house two days back to take my blood when I was having high shivers. For the first time I saw her, she pokes my vein, takes that syringe off. There's nothing that comes in that syringe. Mm. I have seen this. I don't know if you'll believe it. I've seen it. Mm. Then she calls the senior nurse and then she gets a little blood from you. Yeah. And she so calls my mom. Still dehydrated. She calls my mom yeah. an hour back and an hour later or two hours later, she like, take him to the hospital. His, uh, his infection level is 146. Oh, wow. Apparently a normal infection level is 20 or something. Mine was 146. Mm. Then the second day this happens, we go to the hospital. Immediately, I'm transferred to the ICU. Three days, complete blood transfusions. Blood is just being pumped into my body for like the next three days. Then I was moved That's to the ward. That's why you were shivering. Your That's why I was shivering. Was I was in high infection. Fight, yeah. And uh, there's very little blood in my body. Yeah. And then finally, the when I came to the ward, the doctors were like, you see these black marks? They're all dead cells because of injury. Mm. Right? And mm. we cannot keep it like that. You have to remove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's trying to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. We have to remove it. And how do you remove it? They have to take it off. Mm. By like chopping it off. Chopping it off. And I don't feel pain. Oh, wow. So I was not given anesthesia. So you were okay with I've it. seen it happen every single day. Bits wow. by bits. That's what I'm saying. So wow. that is what happened. That's the that's when I was 21 years old, my friend. Yeah. You know, I was just going to ask like, what age were you? And like, 21 years old. 21 year old should be... Have to go through this, yeah, you know, yeah, God yeah. forbid. Yeah. Well, that's what I went through. And and I've seen the knife. It's only really like a small square. It's like a knife of this much. You hold it like a small teeny blade. Yeah. It's very it's sharp. Skeletal. Very sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. This was not a one day procedure. It was mm. every day, bits by bits, bits by bits, bits by bits. And I used to see it and see it. And I became so cold and so hard. Dude, after that, nothing touches me. Mm. Tell me what can touch you when you have gone through something like yeah, this. Yeah, when you when you and literally seen yeah, your own body it, being... Being chopped yeah. off, you know, bits yeah. by bits. Whether you feel it or not. Mm. It takes a lot of, uh, I don't know, it just takes a lot. And then after that, just to fix the wounds he did, I had to go undergo 16 surgeries. Hmm. So the reason I underwent 18 surgeries till date is because 16 was because of the damage he caused and two was my initial head and my back. I and had to redo some surgeries. I had to redo many surgeries. Many kept failing. You know, I did a couple in Bangalore, I did a couple in Kerala and I did the final ones was in Dubai. Okay. Is when things just closed. Mm-hmm. But but like it's it's you went through so much in yeah. that in that time. Was there a point in your mind where like why am I doing all this? Should I just leave it as it is? I did. I did. I did. What has happened to me? I did. I mean, when I was uh, at one point when I was in Kerala, I was like, man, I'm getting all limitations. Everyone's giving me shit. Mm. Uh, everyone is telling me what I can and I can't do from now on in life. Right. And I was I was I was killing it back in school, man. I was like the basketball. I was in basketball team. I was a sports captain. I was the most popular guy in school. Mm. In Bangalore, I was in boxing. I was a boxer. I felt untouchable. Nobody could mess with me. Mm -hmm. I was that. I love bikes. Bangalore, partying capital. I mean, life you, was just... You were really... Like, life in, was good. Yeah, you were in, really into sports. I was into sports. You know, Since I was an athlete. I was that. good. I was yeah. in, at peak performance. I was at the peak performance. And, and you know, I felt like I was... I was. I, was, I had everything I, I wanted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And boom, one day I just dropped to ground zero. And I find myself in the most loneliest place. 
all this thing happening to me so much of pain so much of trauma you just question yourself why are you even doing this anymore right. but one thing i had with me at that time but i've googled i've checked like which is the easiest way to do it mm. you know the easiest way to end it like it got you to that I, point it got yeah. me to that point mm. so much of sadness so much of mm. so much Depression. of pain yeah, yeah. people like like i I've seen from like uh, like movies and stuff when someone really goes through like their their difficult times that's when they see like their best friends also like disappearing like no one really wants to help you like all the people that's you true. thought who were, you were so close to yeah I, I, I'm more than close I think people you expected to be there were oh there. yeah yeah and yeah, people yeah. you never expected to be there were there you mm. know I would I would say it like that and then I think uh, I had a lot of time but to self reflect Mm. you know so because i was on i was just at home all day so i think that is the biggest blessing i had at that time because i had that much of time i started thinking about the person i was how was i as a friend the people i had the things i did the actions i made the choices i made right. you know like how was i as a brother how was i as a son how was i as a boyfriend how was i as a friend sorry how was i as a friend and then you just think and then that's like a biggest wake up call to you you know and then you just think man there was so much of wrongs you have to done mm. you know you shouldn't have done because people are there you know you know you, you just become in a very more nicer state of things that you should have done better mm. you should have done what you could have changed what you would change what you wouldn't change yeah, yeah. you know all of this it gave you it's, a whole new perspective it get me a, gave me a whole new perspective yeah. and at this point of my life i was like so i have to make a choice mm. either let this fire let this let this burn me or let me use it as a fuel to uh, to, to to charge continue, me yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and that's what i did That's amazing. Like that, that fire I had, I could use it to burn me down or use it as a fuel to charge me up. Yeah. And that's the choice I had to make. And the thing I had to do at that point when I made the choice because I saw a pot, I saw a podcast, I saw a video, a documentary video on YouTube of a guy called Dewey Bonzello. I saw his story, seven and a half minute, changed my entire life, changed my entire perspective. Wow. Thought to myself, you know what? Let's take a chance. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's just take it. What's the worst thing can happen? You lost everything you have. You thought yeah, you were near the rock bottom. I am at the up, rock right? bottom. You know, yeah. I am the bottom. Like I am down. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that's even holding me up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, what's the one thing everyone told you you cannot do? And I'm like, that's climbing stairs. You know the story. I'm not sure if you know the story or not. Yeah. That was climbing stairs because I wanted to go to my room, which right. was on the first floor. And everyone told me this is not possible because I just wanted to sleep in my room. It's the most basic thing I wanted in my house. uh and because everything is already denied to me i'm not able to go out i'm literally in the same house every single day you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. in back in kerala yeah and they told me so it's not possible to go upstairs because you know there's no lift we cannot break a certain part and create a lift uh there's nobody who can pick you up and go take you every day upstairs maybe we'll see in the future we'll see i'm like man there's the most simplest thing i want i want to mm-hmm. just go to my room mm-hmm. and we have two rooms downstairs sleep there i'm like no So I asked and they all said no I'm like you know what I got to do what I got to do mm-hmm. like I mean if I'm going to listen to everything with logic it's not going to make sense and I thought to myself how can I climb the stairs everyone's thinking about running and everything about walking but I have my hands are still fine you know what I mean I can still do pick lift I can yourself still lift up, you know yeah. I thought to myself and I went till the end I literally took the biggest chance of my life I went till the end of the step and I lifted myself from my wheelchair to the step and I did like i'm holding back i'm going backwards i held the railing i held one step and i did a push up and i went up and i went one up and i went one up 18 steps up and my mom was holding my leg because it doesn't hit the right ground the wheels, yeah, oh yeah yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. and 18 steps up i climb 18 steps up from the floor i get down to holding my wheelchair on one end the sofa i get to the sofa then from the sofa i get to the wheelchair and i go to my room wow you know when i did this I was sweating, I was panting, I was so dead tired. I literally took breaks in middle of because you know I'm so weak, you know, even just climbing that was like the biggest task ever. But the minute I did it, no, everything changed. Mm. It's like this new neurological connection that just built in my head yeah. and untapped potential and untapped uh, part of me that just came to being and said, you "Welcome." Can do it. to mm-hmm. this side of possibilities right yeah. right right you right. know what i mean mm-hmm. yes. but people don't see it until you're pushed to be in that perspective because yeah. tomorrow yeah. if someone tells you joshua there is you will die within a year if you do not make a million dirhams joshua today you might like no million is a lot i mean i mean probably you're very rich i'm sure of it <laughs> but i'm just saying you know you will joshua you will do everything in your complete potential 
to make sure that you touch that 1 million by before mm. next year because you have to live you know what i mean mm. that is the position i was put into life people don't recognize that until they're pushed into put into that position there is a side of life why people are so successful and why people are doing extraordinary things is when people don't see it people don't understand it people think that wow he is meant for greatness she is meant for having a big mansion but it's that decision that you there took, are certain right? things that people was, don't understand yeah. on how actually everyone can get there yeah yeah no i completely agree as well because like for you it was i i wouldn't say simple but it's something like just going up the stairs going to your room up and going to the stairs sorry please tell, yeah, yeah, please tell yeah yeah so like just basically going to your room but people always think you know it has to be something big something so grand but they don't understand like it always starts with it's a small not, step yeah mm-hmm. it's always something small Good point. a lot Good of point. these small things actually at the end so people build something people see me and they're like oh he climbed the stairs wow that gave him motivation to bounce back no that step climbing made me understand that for the first time in my life at the age of dude i'm like 21 you should understand because mm-hmm. at this age people don't understand is at a certain age in your life you're very dependent on your parents correct yeah. meaning yeah no matter how bad you mess up no matter what screw up you're in you know end of the day dada yeah. or mama yeah. i need your help i really messed up i don't know what to do exactly they will come for us yes. and that's, that's a fact okay correct but when you, what happens when you're in a position and you see everyone around you including your mom and your dad and your relatives nobody has an answer for what your situation is yeah for the first time you have to then take things in you have your depend on yourself in your on your hand and make a difference and that's what i did mm-hmm. so me climbing that steps just made me realize that wow and whenever i asked anyone everyone told me this is impossible and just understood to myself for the first time i did the impossible but yeah. that feeling today i can just say it like that mm. but that feeling at that moment is like wow i know something they didn't know i did something they they never thought i could yeah. you know so that just gave me i'm like wait so just wait that means if they said this was impossible and you just did it whether you walked ran flew doesn't matter you got to your goal that's what matters you mm. got to your goal exactly yeah. that means there are so much of things you can actually do that they say is impossible how so much more from can you there, take yeah things changed i came to dubai i'm like man i need to be more independent because you know i i needed still help to move from my wheelchair to the sofa mm-hmm. like somebody had to hold the wheelchair somebody had to hold my legs right. still weak i'm like what do i need which was my strongest suit back in the day and that was uh, my my physique like i was very proud of my physique man like you know i was yeah you're an athlete was, uh, yeah like you cannot just beat me down i will mm-hmm. stay i will my fist will hurt you you know what i'm saying his say? arms are ready at the side <laughs> of his head so <laughs> like <laughs> it's hard to do like yeah. i had uh, I need to get back to the gym. I need to build and I'm like but I don't know what I can do. See, today people know me, I they see me doing crazy stuff in the gym, but back at that time you should know when I'm skin and bones and I have very little core balance to go to the gym was a big statement. 100%, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to show up. Just yeah. to show up, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom was like I'll help you and you know, my dad used to go to work. My and this is us when we came back to Dubai in 2015. So my so dad you alongside your mom and your dad as well. My dad is here my sister okay. is here. So till in India all these stories were just me and my mom because she was retired. Okay. But my dad has a job, my sisters have a job so they got to be here, you know. Right. Then we got a visa and then I came to Dubai. And when I came to Dubai and my mom used to wheel me every day. My gym was in the next building. Ah, okay. But she used to wheel me till the next building. My trainer used to take yes. me then she used to come back and when I'm done she used to come pick me back up. So slow this is how it started so this is like you said you know it's a little little things that started the little thing was me making i want to go to the gym yeah. you know and uh, so you showed up every day i showed up every yeah. day but gym became like a religion you know every mm. day I was at 6 yeah, o'clock yeah, yeah. 5:30 6 o'clock i'm there and i'm out by 8 o'clock and i'm eating good i'm eating clean slowly i developed some muscle mm. i developed some more muscular control on my body so then i told mama after a few weeks or something mama you don't uh, need to Did wheel you don't have you. to drop me yeah. i think i can manage and move i started wheeling myself from the building little little things like this yes. you know and yes. i wheeled from my building till the next building and i went to the gym and i came back and then it became a little bit more independent i could start going out a little bit by myself and then i got sponsored so that a little fast forward gymming really made me like uh, for the first time in my life 3 months fast forward i find myself bench pressing 100 kilograms Wow. This guy who couldn't move without holding on something I'm bench pressing on people in I still remember something you know people in the gym and I entered beginning uh, I remember asking this guy can you give me that dumbbells over there and I couldn't access the rack hmm is like what 5 kilo as like no 10 kilo but the way he meant it like how much is he going to take yeah and there are days then in the in that same gym where I am lifting doing shoulder presses uh-huh. with 25 kilos each on each hand 
and half the gym is paused to see how much reps is he going to do yeah. because some of them cannot even do that yeah, you I know can't, man. yeah like it's 25 it's 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 totally 50 kilos you know you're yeah. shoulder pressing yeah. you know and i did 100 kilos and i've done the most crazy thing but even in the gym i've fallen down my hand has been cut by dumbbells falling on me i've had surgeries where i've extra machines with me i've carried that to the gym and i worked out i was mental i was crazy but end of the day i would die but i want to do what i got to do you know that was the attitude that was the mentality i had and you i showed up like, there are literally machines i've had after surgeries that mm-hmm. was a drainage tube connected inside my body i've carried that to the gym moved it on the side got to the bench press machine bench press finished my set went to the uh, the arms area finished mom and i've gone home So for those so who have never a, stopped me. you know a reason and not a reason to get to the gym <laughs> just just look at Sujit. You know now I'm inspired to go back to the you gym. You got to get back to the gym. <laughs> and fast forward my my sister just DMs uh, Chris Fade mm-hmm. uh Bojan Radio Chris Fade show and Chris is like does he want to be on the show and the first time I get on the show we speak up on a story people are really inspired because of the fact that I still managed to go to the gym even after uh you know such a big injury happening to me. And then from Chris Fade 2017 gives me a call like buddy I'm going to I have my fade fit getting launched the brand oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right and I want you to be a speaker over there nice. and that was in Mina CI it was the first time I'm like whoa you want me to speak about what he's like just a story you know I think it it's quite inspiring and I gave a 45 minute speech people are in tears and people are crying and you know there was so much of emotions running around that place mm. because I was so raw you know I was just yeah. telling them everything that happened and i got sponsored by ufc gym for a one year membership nice. oh, wow. at that point yeah and that led me su- to getting my tedx talk my first tedx talk in the same year mm mm-hmm. but getting sponsored by ufc was crazy because ufc gym had something my gym didn't happen and i really wanted to go to that gym but i didn't have the money because i was not making money at that time mm-hmm. and i did not have a car and uh, i did not know how to go to the gym now this is the part where i really want to say what i did i'm sure there are 90% of the crowd like dude we heard the story before <laughs> but i had got to tell you again is because i stay in sharjah at that time you have seen right. jumis in business bay how am i going to get a sharjah to business bay without a cost yeah how mm-hmm. so i thought to myself because i cannot pay man i cannot afford 150 bucks just by cab every single day it's yeah, yeah, a lot you know what i mean yeah. so i'm like wait metro and buses are free for people of determination in the uae mm-hmm. right yeah so i stay in sharjah like al nahda like right in front of sara center Mm-hmm. and sara center is probably i think 200 to 300 meters away from my house i used to wheel through this meters enter sara mall from the front sara right. center yeah. mall from the front exit from, from the, the back, back. Yeah. okay then i come to dubai from there i catch a bus to gisay's metro station right. from gisay's metro station all the way to business bay metro station from business bay catch a bus f41 till bay square from bay square wheel a little bit more to the ufc gym right. walk out for two hours and do the same thing back Wow. Every day my gym session 5 and a half hours. I leave at 5 o'clock in the morning. I come back at 11:30 a.m. Wow. I did that only for one thing, not because there was the same gym, but UFC gym had something that my gym didn't have which was boxing bags. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I love boxing. <laughs> yeah. And I did that solo. I did not have anyone traveling with me. I did that every single day until I could I had my car license and I was then I'm just getting there is a workout life. in itself getting there is a workout warmed up yeah. I I that's yeah. what I'm saying you know I used to travel man two and a half hours only traveling just to box those bags wow cuz my goal who will tell me no who can stop me I want to do something it might not be the most sensible thing people might not have five and a half hours yeah. I had five and a half hours yeah, that yeah, time yeah. today I don't have that mm-hmm. time yeah, 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 you know okay. but when I had it I did what I wanted to do and I people come and tell me I want to get fit I don't have time like Shut up. Do you have a building? Do you have a gym in your own building? You and a lot mm-hmm. of people have in Dubai, my friend. Yeah. And you can't have the time to go work out then that's your problem. So when you really want something you can do it. But you, you got to be time. willing to make those sacrifices and you got to be willing to stop some things in your life that you don't need. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to make and then you got to just do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. There's literally almost everything that you can do in life, almost everything you can do in life. if you are letting to make those sacrifices for it yeah that might come out as letting go of people letting go of habits letting go of things prioritizing some other things over some other things whether it may I be agree. boring or not yeah it depends on what you want it depends on what you yeah. want like if you say yes to something it's always you're saying no to something else right that's right. a lot of and we are all we as human beings want to be in a safe and comfort zone you don't want to be in a zone of threat and mm-hmm. anything outside your comfort zone your body will not want your body doesn't want to run uh freaking 100 200 meters every yeah. day and kill yourself and push yourself in the gym no it doesn't yeah. it's not comfortable unless you make your mind to be comfortable with that thing that's why there are gym addicts 
Yeah. Like without going to the gym now I'll be uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's part it's, of your life now. It's yeah. part of my life, but it's literally a game with your mind. Yeah. Your mind is like your blessing and your curse at the same time. Mm. Because if your mind is really wanting something and your heart and your body wants the same thing, dude, nothing will stop you getting it. But if your body wants something and your mind says, "Uh, let's not do it." Uh, no. Yeah. So it's you have to literally fight with your own self you have to convince yourself to be in that path of alignment you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. Makes and it's and it's easy for like like all these gym addicts you know like oh you're you're really strong look at those arms look at those that ch- chest that you have but at the same yeah. time the one thing that they all like a lot of people forget to think about is like the mental strength mm. that you need you know you can spend like 5 hours in the gym right. but then you come home you're sitting in front of a tv like eating crap food everything but they don't understand like how important mental strength is is yeah, yeah. reason i say jim's example is when we you know we even i know you're supporting the statement yeah. but it's like yeah. it's not about because you can physically become good looking yeah that's that's the bonus part of it yeah. the reason i say it is because now anything in life you want now there are a lot of people like are but jim is not body is on my priority i want a better job i want a better something i don't know mm-hmm. better goals better accomplishments better awards better recognition in whatever field like we're talking about a billion other fields right now I say is that because if you have the commitment and discipline to like you say go to the gym lift those weights which are not comfortable for your body right because you're pushing yourself eat and eat clean yeah. that means keeping your eat mind better. at discipline saying there is chicken biryani here mm. or there is KFC mm. or there's pizza yeah. I don't want it I will stick to my clean diet which is boring mm. which is not interesting because I'm doing this from the past 45 days mm. it's you, it, your body doesn't want it my friend it doesn't yeah. want dry chicken doesn't want just little sweet potato or vegetables but well vegetables still, yeah. yeah man i know something is going to see if you are yeah. ready to do that to your body right and you get the result mm. that's a very hard thing to do then you will know the rest of your path in life what you need to let go and accept will be much easier yeah makes sense I agree. because agree, yeah. you're already yeah. training your mind regardless of whatever it is to function in a way that you're pushing your limits right so when you get to a point where your job or your personal life or your relationships bring you to a difficult point you yeah. already start it'll be easier yeah, yeah you'll yeah. be rock solid yeah, that's yeah. what it takes you know but i think the key word here is discipline because i was i read yeah. somewhere i must have heard somewhere about Okay, motivation can only get you so far. Like, oh, yeah. motive. Like, I'll listen to yeah, this story. Right, right, I'll listen right. to this podcast. Right. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to the gym. I'll do it for a week, and then suddenly it dies out. Yeah. But discipline is really waking up at six a.m. Yeah. Even if you slept like what, like five, four hours, going to the gym, coming back, cooking your consistency, your dried chicken, like you said, your sweet potatoes, having that for lunch when you're getting like ads on your phone, like Talabat, mm-hmm. Deliveroo, KFC, right, right. everything, and it's it's. It all, at the end of the day, it's all about discipline. Yeah, yeah. Because motivation will will die down sooner or later. But it's very true. Motivation yeah. is short lived. That's yeah. in fact. Yeah. I'm telling you, motivation yeah. is yeah. very yeah. short lived. That's why there are people after my speeches or wherever I give, they're super motivated and they come to me like I'm super charged. I'm going to do this. Maybe two days later they would stop it. Exactly. So it's yeah. literally it's about discipline. Yeah. Yeah. It's about discipline. It's about discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've already talked about like a lot of maybe people can get like uh, bits and pieces of advice, but ultimately what would be your advice for someone who might have also gone through you know um, a life threatening yeah. period in their life or maybe someone who's just gotten into a disability like what is your one thing that you would advise them you know i yeah. i uh, if if someone's actually listening to that you know right mm-hmm. now it's like what i say is there are a lot of people who came and told me during this period like you know it's going to be it's going to get better and all those are things i would never listen to Now, there are some journeys you have to go through solo understand from it and become mm. stronger from it because i've had so many people don't worry son it's going to get better look at the positive side of life i didn't want to hear that mm. and i'm sure these people also want this advice that i'm giving them you know but i always say after a point of time where i went through the denial and i went through the anger and i didn't want any of those advice because i'm not a guy who can really get make a change on someone else mm. i need i really need to convince myself else even like I don't the most best motivational speaker comes and tells me no that's on the I wouldn't listen to it. Mm-hmm. Like I need to make sense to it my own. You know I'm like that that hard on myself in that way. So I tell them you know like there are those journeys that you have to go through you have to understand the pain but you have to always understand that that because this is what I told myself this may be your current situation right now but it does not have to be your final situation. 
yeah. or your final destination. Yeah. That's what I told myself. Right. I told myself I hate to accept it. I hate to till date yeah. that I'm in a wheelchair. It pisses me off, man. Mm. But this is not going to be my state tomorrow or an, one day it'll happen. It'll change. Yeah. So I'm working. So what happens? I only have two options. You also have only two options. You either not accept it and just stay in the same position you are or you take a big damn chance yeah. and see what's going to get you. But I guarantee you one thing, if you don't take that chance, your situation will always remain the same. Yeah. Beautifully, sir. That's yeah. very, very there, good. There's no one yeah. else who's going to help them propel except for themselves. Yeah. But it has to You have to make Yeah, all choice. the resources yeah. could be given yeah. on your plate, but yeah. then if you don't reach out and take it, yeah. doesn't Nothing mean anything, change. right? Yeah, you have to take a chance. You have to take a risk because I took the chance because what more do I have to lose? My life, big deal. I was already done with my legs. When my legs went, I, I thought I'm done. Mm. like I wouldn't be scared I mean after what I've seen happen to me what I've seen all the pain all the torture all the trauma dude like it becomes so cold you know like nothing will like nothing you will at this point. I used yeah. to go laughing on a, when, the, when the surgeries were happening I'm not joking like <laughs> wow. I used to go care freaking free man yeah like wow. it was nothing I met somebody recently they were like they have a small hernia surgery he should scared he doesn't want to <laughs> do it I'm like I used to laugh when I used to go in and I'm like another surgery fine when I'll be doing it like that became the attitude right. Right, right, right. but that's why I think I'm a very good example to advise you on this thing mm. there is certain things you have to make that understanding with yourself yeah no one is telling you that it's going to be easy no one is telling you that um, it's you have to just be positive because dude like right. you know all the people don't worry it's good if you have people telling you that yeah but you have to understand I have you have to understand that if you're not going to un make peace with it so that you can move forward, you will stay in the same place forever. Yeah. So true. take a chance. Yeah. I took a chance. Take a chance. And then you see something positive will happen if you have a mentality that I want to move forward, no matter what your situation is. Yeah. You know, and one more thing, just one more thing. If if anybody is in a spinal cord injury or like myself in a wheelchair, I've also done this and I'm sure you're also thinking about the same thing. Well, like, oh man, at least, but he could move his trunk. His mm. trunk balance was better. Or his arms are at least moving. My arms are also not moving. No, don't do this. Mm. Just attitude is much. Even I'm like, dude, my, I'm, I just have this much. Like, mm. it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Right? But I did a lot. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. don't think that, uh, don't compare that, oh, he had it a little better, she had it a little better. I had it, I had it way bad. Yeah. People look at me and they think I have, like, you know, there are people who come in, they like, we were talking about the haters earlier. Mm. So, that's the advice, guys. I don't want to break that off, but yeah. please keep that in your mind. Well said. But, yeah. Here is, you know, there are guys who come to me, people I know also, they're like, oh man, you have it so easy, bro. You have it so lucky. I'm not joking. They come and tell me, you have it so easy, you're so lucky. Wow. You're just getting recognized and people are knowing you and you're getting all the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get back to the haters. Yo. Yeah. So you, you were just saying, after your, your wonderfully said advice, the haters. So, uh, yeah, so but the haters cut thing. I recently had a podcast as well where mm -hmm. someone was asking me, how do you identify toxic people in your life? And I think mm -hmm. it's very important, especially... In Dubai, where people have thousands of friends, you have so many different associates. And I really think it's important to identify who you have to be close with, which circle you have to be in, and which circle you have to tell no. Whether they are also not giving, not doing anything, but you have got you got to be in your right zone, you know? Yeah. So what I mean by haters is because there was a point of time where I was in Dubai and I, I only knew this one crowd of people, mm -hmm. bunch of people. And mm -hmm. uh, all I used to do with them was either go to Mamzar or, ka or be on chilling under my beach. Mm. For me, at that time, going under Mamzar or something was going to equivalent to going to Atlantis mm -hmm. especially a guy who's come back after all these injuries and I have nothing to look forward mm -hmm. to I do not forget nothing I do not know what to do in front right okay. this is like the initial phases of my time and uh going to Mamzar was like the wow mm. I, I, yeah I, I'm chilling I think I was must have been with you sometime you know <laughs> I, I used to go Mamzar yeah, like, yeah. Billy Chai in my hands. Billy Chai, no, yeah, same stuff, man. <laughs> and you know, that was like a big thing for me at that time, you know. And uh, then I noticed that these people were not taking me anywhere else. Like whenever they used to go out or partying or something, oh, no, man, it's so much of it. There are steps. There are, oh. that, then I was an inconvenience, you know, for them mm -hmm. in such a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, slowly, you know, like the Chris Fate show happened and I started becoming a speaker, started meeting some known people. And then I started getting these calls. So then I drifted away from that crowd, right? Mm -hmm. Then I started getting the calls. Hey, bro, what happened? You forgot me. Mm -hmm. You're partying with so-and-so yeah, person yeah. we saw. You are with so-and-so person. Where are you now? Mm -hmm. So then it clicks. You're like, oh, okay. Then when you have a name. Today, I get those calls every, almost every other day. Bro, where are you? You're not chilling with us anymore. I mean, to, I mean, today I'm like 100 levels mm -hmm. different from that time. But like people are now, you know, coming back in that way. Mm -hmm. Now they yeah. want to. So there are a lot of people, like we were saying, you know, who would want something from you, or want to be with you for something. 
Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. They're not getting money out of me, but it's either the fame or it's either the yeah. known factor. And they're not the most nicest people for you. Mm-hmm. They want it because you have it today. When I didn't have it, who were there for you? That's are the people who stick by you. There are some yeah. people who are there as well. When I had nothing, yeah. took care of me, took care of my expenses, took me to places I wanted to go. They're my best friend, Akhil, man. Like big shout out to this guy because, oof, the thing he has done for me. I don't know if my own. I don't have a brother, but I don't think my own real brother would do it. Mm. You know, those are the hardcore people you want in life who will tell you stop it. You're messing up. Yeah. Whichever position you're level you are in, check. Yeah. Who will give you a reality check? Stop it. Now you're messing up, yeah. or now you're letting it get into your head. Yeah. And who will stand behind you when someone comes in, comes to you know to give you that? Like yeah. no matter. So these are the people you need. You do not need. I'm a guy who needed like 1500 people with them. I mean, in school I was like that. Mm. I always had a bunch of people walking around with me. College I had felt I had, I knew like you know. A lot of every people. yeah a lot of yeah. people. Today I say I have a lot. I have a lot of. I have very few friends. Yeah. But I have a lot of associates. Yeah. You know, that's people who I'm associated with. I just yeah. know. But my friends, friends, core circle, yeah. very, very few, and that's how I keep it, and that's how I always say it. Mm. And because uh, these are the people you have to spend time with as well. Right? These are very close yeah. spend time. Over quantity, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Like I was, I was just about to say that. Yeah. You know, you don't need a lot of people. You just need the three right of few right people in your life, and you will feel like you have. Thousands of people. Yeah, that's the best part yes. about having a few right people in your. Yes, yes. You will feel like you have thousands. It's a whole army. I, I yes, totally agree army. with that because, yeah. uh, like, like, uh, not to make it about ourselves, but uh, we had our wedding, and I'm like, who do I invite? I want uh, people who I will like really want there, you know. Right. And like, I see weddings where online there is like two thousand people, all these things. Like, no, but like, I only had like maybe my ten closest friends, and to me, that was enough to make me right. like think, wow, I am loved. People are really here supporting our our love for each other and stuff. So it's really so true what you said. You know, like yeah. small group, very tight, mm. and just keep it like that. Makes you yeah. feel like you'll have the best time ever. Yeah, so true. Yeah, that so makes true. sense. And these are the people, as you said, who were there from the beginning when you were still working your way up yeah. and working to being where you are at right now yeah. and still in your life. And right they now. see me no different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that's the best part. Yeah. But the other guys, they see, oh wow, you yeah. know, they see it a little different. So those are the people I, you should. Yeah. Stay away. And um, I like what you said oh, that they put you in your place. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah you know, because you, you need, need those. You need, need, need those need friends. That. Yeah, those friends. especially when you start like rising in the ranks. Yeah, yeah. some ego could really comes up. No, that happens. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would Someone... see so many people talking about so many celebrities yeah. talking about how egos take over their life. Yeah, how they think they're some big shit. Yeah, and you always need to know, even though you are something, you gotta stay humble. Mm. You know, Remember, I know people recognize mm-hmm. me. I know people the way they approach me, mm. and a lot of things have changed. When I go to either a school or I go to a function, wow, they give me a lot of respect. Mm. Earlier, if I took that as, yeah, I'm the shit. Yeah. Today, I take it with so much of gratitude and so much of thankfulness Beautiful. to God yeah. that I am put in a position today, and my my mom and dad is happy. You know, that's 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 like the most important thing for me. They raised you. My well. mom and dad has to be proud. Mm. They are that. I'm my. I think my job is done. Yeah. So that's what I I I I have a lot of gratitude for the position I'm in. I have a lot of thankfulness to God that I'm even alive. Yeah. So that's how I see myself today. So I and I don't want to go back to even thinking that I'm anything, you know. Like yeah, I think that's what I'm makes just, you successful. I'm just, I'm just me, like what yeah. I did. I just did it. I did it for me because I didn't have an option. Mm. My option was to either die, kill myself, or at least become one person in life. Right. But during my journey, when I see so many other people. Are getting motivated by my story that fueled as a fire for me that Sujit finally you have some purpose to live right make yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. so that yeah, was yeah. my fire yeah to do what I do today yeah. so I do the craziest thing because I I still feel I have nothing to lose mm-hmm. you know I still feel like I do the most stupidest shit like pulling a car I almost broke my back when I work out in the gym I I hear ten different sounds something happening in my body I'm like screw he's like coach is like should we stop this and I'm like no bloody give me that dumb I'm not joking I'm very serious yeah. you know increase yeah. by five coach you know <laughs> I'm pulling cars I used to pass out pulling cars man mm-hmm. I used to be water thrown in my eye, face and then pull the car again and then yeah. till it moves and what not man like you know you I've continue done, yeah I've you done scuba on. diving I've done jet skiing I've done skydiving I whatever like I could do get my hands into I've done it wow. I I recently did cart dro it's not a big thing but you know I I've I think I I felt I was going to die in scuba diving a couple of times, like I don't know I dived in the deepest pool in the world. Ah yes. Oh the uh, one the in the one in yeah the yeah. deep dive. It's, it's bloody scary. Like wow. it's sixty feet when you look at it, really your heart pops uh, comes in your mouth. That would I'd, be your worst nightmare. Yeah, I cannot <laughs> swim. That's I cannot swim as well. <laughs> That's the best part. Even I cannot swim, my friend. 
and jumping out of a plane. But I always do this, and I yeah. always love it in this movie triplex. Uh, you know, Vin Diesel's movie yeah, triplex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And he says this thing before he jumps out of the plane. I live for this shit. Mm. So right before I jumped out of the plane, and I was half out of it. I live for this shit. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I don't. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not too got... sure I still want it. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm can we go Diesel. back up? <laughs> no, we can't. No, but you know, I think something as well. You know, I think it's very important if we got to do things that scares us, like really takes our life away from mm. us. um but not in a way that you get a cardiac arrest or something but yeah. like this is because uh, i generally feel and this is my trip on life that's why i do all these crazy things as i can is that the moment you're so scared on the verge of death like some things will give you that scare that you're on the verge of death some things will give you a really big scare like that's two different scares in a way yeah. and if you are in either one of them i think you will f- that after that scare is when you will feel alive Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, adrenaline yeah. and that, i think yeah. as human beings there are so much feelings there are so much uh, things about us that we don't know and we realize it over time that is why when you yeah, hear a lot it. of advices of people for example i'll give you the most basic example when you're a little younger you do really care of how you look how you talk to somebody how you are how you're in public that's true is my is my yeah. shirt okay is my this okay is my yeah yeah the swag as you, yeah whatever right <laughs> and uh, as you grow older in life you stop giving a damn Yeah. Exact correct. Okay. True. Now yeah. why after a point of time do you stop giving a damn? Cuz you realize it doesn't really make doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. You don't yeah. really care. Nobody gives a sh- no. that basically, right? You, you're not the center of your universe. Yeah, and yeah. you don't have to more important. Yeah. You do not care about other people's validity. Yeah. yeah. Right? What happens when you're at 30 you realize that? Yeah. What happens yeah. if you put that same knowledge on a person of 20 years old? Mm. Wow. Mm-mm. Now we're talking some match yeah. stuff, right? Exactly. So learn like so I think I got that through this period of I probably got what I would get at 40 now. Yeah, yeah, you because of what I went through it. You know, that's yeah. how I see. It. So that's my purpose. I feel I want to tell the same stuff to the younger kids. Mm. So my schools are like my favorite because I'm like guys understand I am here telling you. Mm. In the right way, the way it should be told. This is how it's going to be for you like 10 years down the line. understand that now yeah work like that right now you know what i mean yeah. so with the knowledge i had today if i did it in my school or my college days dude i would be yeah other league no freaking doubt no, if i true. if i worked that hard yeah because i understand the power of working hard the yeah. the power of really giving everything that you have yeah i have abused that in terms of my body that's why my body has taken a toll mm. like but that the only thing that stops me today is my physicality because there is things i can and i cannot control the mobility side you know the yeah. mobility and the precious sores that comes with the spinal cord injury mm-hmm. and i'm still recovering from an injury as, as we speak that's why i've not touched been in the gym in the past 2 months oh okay that's why i'm like the smallest i have been ever and you know so small okay. he's small <laughs> i'm not joking then like even yesterday i'm like dude what happened you became small i'm like oh damn it what happened just like i need yeah. to get to the gym now <laughs> no i used to be big i used to be quite yeah. bulky you know mm-hmm. uh-huh. and so yeah so the only thing that stops me is when the injuries come and all of that mm. but yeah otherwise you can you should just give your 100% man like what why not yeah don't you want greatness in your life that's the question i have to ask people yeah. Yeah. i want to be like great message i for a kids. fact i'm telling you openly i want to create the reason i'm doing all these things and i'll keep doing it till i freaking die i want to create my legacy yeah i want my legacy to be as such like you know people know me and like how i see kobe bryant's legacy and i follow it i want people to follow me in the, that way mm. like the man that guy was a mad mf you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. the stuff he did i wish i could do that mm-hmm. now what made him do that stuff yeah his principles his work ethics his mindset his thing to freaking die tomorrow if he dies but he live like a king today mm. like that's what i tell i said people die tomorrow mm. but live like a king today mm. do everything you can today mm-hmm. dude you have you have so much man why you don't yeah. realize that yeah what is taken you have paisa you have money today you have legs your arms you're moving mm. you can talk you can breathe <sighs> mm. what is stopping you who is stopping you people yeah, yeah. yeah. no it's it's just basically you know? like how the the mind plays tricks on you at the end of the day you know like yeah. it'll they'll they'll be like oh i'm going to wake up tomorrow or something something as simple as that but then the other side of the brain is like no sleep in another 10 minutes you know like yeah. or take, we'll do take, it tomorrow take, take the comfortable route yeah, yeah. yeah. those why i said I abuse my my abuse my body is because there are days where i was like i have my 9 to 5 I go train my clients, and I have so much of things going on. And there are some days, not every day, but some days. And at nine o'clock, I come back home and I'm dead, and everything in my body is paining. I just tell myself that, but you didn't work out today. Like today was a working out day; it was not a rest day. Okay. And you didn't okay. work out. What do I do? And then I'll be like, you know what? If you take a break today, somebody else will take your place, and you will come steps back. 
not like somebody will take my place that I want his place, but you will not move and you will not be a champion. Yeah, you will yeah, not yeah, get yeah. to your legacy of greatness. Yeah. What do I do? Because you have I to really push mind. myself. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm getting comfortable on the bed and I want to take a break. I yeah. really want to rest it out. Yeah. I go pop a pre workout. I'm at the gym, bro, till eleven o'clock in the night. I come back home, I shower, I sleep, and then I wow. make my food and I sleep at three o'clock. This used to happen for a very long time until it took a toll on my body. Yeah. But and so I'm saying not to do it. But it took a toll because you know when you push so much and then I'm very prone to wounds because I'm just sitting all the time. Yeah. So pressure right. sores are something that happens with the spinal cord injury, right. and yeah. it takes forever to heal. It yeah. sucks, but. Sorry for cussing on your podcast, but, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but you know it so was the passion. I'm not going to tell you what you cannot do but, anymore <laughs> like, after all this. But it's the mindset. What I'm trying yeah. to say is the mindset to keep going and keep doing as much as you can till the very last. Yeah, doing that, something will change in your life. Something will, you will get something. You will at least get from zero to one. Yeah. Promise myself, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. Woo! I'm not going to say no anymore. I think. I think it's. It also is a good way for people to think, you know, like people, because I, I know how like the mind does play tricks and they'll be like, I could say I achieved a lot myself, mm. but then they really don't go back to the place where they were like a few years ago, you know, like I'll say, oh, I hate my job, you know, I hate, but then like, where, where where was I five years ago when I was like hating my job even more? I was mm. never leaving the bed. They never really give them that credit, you know, like where was I yesterday? Where yeah. am I today? And where yeah. do I want to be? And that's their true. purpose as well. Yeah. Very true. Because yeah. they, they always say like, I always come, like now after this, I'll compare myself to you. Mm. But they should be comparing myself to the person who I was. Five years ago. Yeah, yeah. five years yeah. ago, you know? Yeah, where you so, are, when you're headed at. Yeah. That I mean, that was a, a, a lovely message to wrap everything up. And I guess for me, I just have like a final question. Like, what is next for you? Okay, so I get this personally, question Personally, professionally, what's next? Professionally, I'm trying to get into, you know, instead of like having a proper nine to five, I really want to get in the speaking business because I really think I'm good at it. And I really think I have the power to convince and make a change for positive in people. So that's something I'm trying to look into professionally. Yeah. Uh, and uh, personally, the goal is always to make a difference in the entire world. Like there's nothing changed in that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I want my legacy out there. Mm -hmm. I worked very hard to be where I am today. God's blessings, my mother's prayers, my dad's prayers, a lot mm -hmm. of people's prayers. I came back to life and I made a good change in people's life because I've had thousands of messages of people telling me on how I've impacted their lives and how much people mail me with very personal, very, very personal information asking me for a solution. People who are oh, wow. way older to mm -hmm. me. Mothers, daughters, younger younger and older people. Like I wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine the age group of people that message me to, with the most personal messages mm. asking me if I have a solution for it mm. so they at least put me in a place where they think I might have a solution for them mm -hmm. now I don't know how what I did in my life to earn that position but I'm very grateful for it yeah. so I try my best to give the right advice to somebody because if I tell them something and if they actually change their life for better I mean what they do that's like bigger than a million bucks man coming into yeah. your account where you change someone's life Making you know what I mean? don't you feel scared that like a lot of people are putting that much faith in you and like they think you are god and i'm like, great you have it. all the answers no, i'm grateful yeah. for it so i try to do my best mm. okay i don't i don't i don't uh see it as a curse no not at all man like i'm like what did dude i was i used to, i got kicked out of my school here i got kicked out of my next school for fighting i was that kid dude i was like all i was super rebellious i was super like from that to this position where i am today it's definitely a blessing and I think there is definitely a purpose that even I'm back with, especially a 40% chance of survival, a 3 out of 15 GSC, being in coma, support of artificial ventilator. There I am, your Guinness World Record, 8.72 days yeah. of training. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. You tell me, dude. Yeah. You tell me. Yeah. I love that. There I is love that. some untold yeah. connections happening here and there everywhere. Yeah. Something and is something. This is, is what there. you were seeing yourself, and, and now it's here. You must be very, very proud of yourself. The only pressure I have yeah. now is like people ask me, What's after Guinness? I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I got to jump out of a plane. So I don't know if Red Bull is going to watch this, but I actually thought about it. So I'm doing my wishful thinking manifestation. Yeah, now. there you go. I'm You've like, manifested Red Bull, your Guinness. Let's yeah. do this. If you're going to watch it, let's. I don't know, figure out a way we jump out of a plane and uh, do something mid air. Yeah. In Red a Bull wheelchair. Gives wings. I'm totally game. Yeah, wow. let's bag Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a final question before we end. <laughs> yeah. It's a simple yes or no question. Okay. Would you ever go back on a motorcycle again? Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, definitely, dude. Wow. I even was talking to some people about it. Yeah. So some people are like, let's do a four, you know, the two wheels of motorcycle. Oh, yeah. But yeah I'm yeah. like, no, I need two. I need. I don't want four wheels. I want two wheels. Mm. It has to be. But they I cannot balance bike. two wheels. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So, but there's a guy in the UK who has modified in his bike where there's two small wheels, mm. like a liver that comes out. And while the bike is in momentum, the wheels lift up. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, so then okay, it becomes okay, two wheels. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. when you come to a stop, it comes it's down slow. again. Okay, yeah, okay. so when I have enough funding for it, shout out to Suzuki, Honda, anybody who wants to sponsor <laughs> me, I'm game to ride the bike. Nice. But do definitely do it. Yeah, everybody has to be a sports bike. I love that. Awesome. Not some, that's that. nice. Yeah. Conquer, conquer what conquered Conqu- you. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. I love it. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I, I think it could have gone forever, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until we. We'll have you in a part two in a year, so we should say what else is there. Oh, yeah, what else sure. you After oh, another sure. record is broken. <laughs> yeah. Another or created. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Sushi. Thank you guys thank so you. much this for This wonderful. You guys are super cool. Thank yes. you. Thank you guys. And on Thanks that note, have a nice day, everyone. See you.